Uh, I, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you uh, to talk, talk about the, the challenges and strategies for dragon fruit in the region. Uh, next, please. Um, I would like to talk about uh, the GAP, the uh, GAP program and government policies in Japan, and also uh, give you some numbers uh, related to implementation, program implementation and cost of the certification. And finally, I uh, would like to talk about some challenges in the Asia Pacific region, uh, as well as strategic focus on dragon fruit businesses. Uh, next, please. Uh, I'm trying to put some uh, uh, summaries uh, uh, I would like to cover uh, today. Uh, number one is, in the case of Japan, uh, GAP uh, certified farmers uh, increasing every year. Uh, I'll show you numbers later. Uh, second one is uh, Ministry of Agriculture in Japan is promoting GAP uh, for farmers because they can seek more opportunities uh, in their business. Uh, third one is the Global Food Safety Initiative. Uh, GFSI, uh, this organization is providing a benchmark of the food safety. Uh, there are a couple of types of GAP program, and one of the, the uh, one type is Asia GAP, uh, which requires food safety benchmark by this organization. Uh, uh, number four is uh, hazard analysis and critical control point, uh, HACCP, we call HACCP. Uh, this concept is a risk management process and also a, a standard of the food safety. The uh, GFSI uh, requires uh, this HACCP based concept to Asia GAP, for example. Uh, uh, number five is uh, GAP uh, certificate has a, a great value to promote drug and fruit in, in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, six, uh, number six is but we, we have to pay cost uh, to be certified, so let's talk about it later. Uh, the last one is, uh, in addition, uh, other than uh, being certified farmers, we may have some uh, options uh, to be same level of gap certification. Uh, this is the final uh, the, the discussion point I'd like to cover today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this uh, slide represents a uh, GAP program uh, in Japan. Uh, JGAP, Japan GAP, uh, is started in uh, 2007. Uh, GAP uh, concept was recognized as same level of Euro Europe GAP, which was uh, developed in 2004. Uh, and JGAP uh, is focusing on ensuring control point uh, for the farmers to manage uh, their farm and labor safety, environmental protection, uh, things like that. And in addition to uh, Japan GAP, uh, Asia GAP was developed in 2017. And this Asia GAP uh, is uh, approved by GFSI uh, to meet their requirement, benchmarking requirement for food safety. Uh, uh, one uh, very important uh, requirement is HACCP uh, based uh, food safety and risk management uh, process. So uh, these uh, uh, different types of gap, uh, both J gap and Japan gap, uh, meet Tokyo uh, 2020 Olympic Games food procurement uh, guideline. Uh, in terms of GAP, uh, we have local based GAP, uh, for example, prefecture based processes. Each pro uh, 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 many prefectures have their own GAP process, uh, like uh, Japan GAP or Asia GAP, and also agricultural co op based uh, GAP. Uh, so we have uh, different types of gap, but uh, uh, food safety uh, requirement uh, was met uh, for the Asia gap. And Asia gap is uh, for, uh, the expectation for Asia gap is to strengthen farmers uh, uh, because they have more opportunities to export safe and quality, high quality product. Uh, 
uh, to outside Japan. And also uh, GAP will have a chance to introduce product widely to the marketplace, uh, both in Japan and other countries. Uh, next, slide, next slide, please. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, government policies, uh, GAP certificate uh, will have opportunity to grow business. Uh, Ministry of Agriculture uh, is promoting a gap for farmers uh, because they will have uh, business growth opportunities. And one uh, uh, policy is to, they are intending to develop gap instructors to promote farmers to be certified. Uh, at the end of March 21st this year, uh, J Gap trainer uh, is more than 9,000 persons. And in the case of Asia Gap, uh, there are 2,300 trainers for Asia Gap uh, in Japan. So in total, uh, roughly 11.4 thousand trainers uh, are in Japan uh, to support to be able to be ready for supporting farmers to be certified. Uh, and one target uh, for uh, uh, Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, is that uh, farmers will be certified three times higher than 2016. Uh, they said uh, three times higher of current level. And phase one is 2017 to two, 2020. So in five years, uh, they, they are trying to increase uh, certified farmers uh, three times higher than the current level. Uh, I will show you uh, the numbers uh, later slide. And finally, uh, Ministry of Ag uh, is uh, to trying to, to, they are expecting uh, Asia gap to be a standard in Asia uh, Pacific region. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I'll give you some numbers uh, of the trend uh, gap certification in Japan. Uh, the data is available since 2008, uh, but we focus on starting 2015. Uh, as you see on, the, on, on this chart, uh, the numbers of farm, uh, farmers certified are increasing every year. Uh, for example, uh, in 2016, uh, certified uh, certificate uh, was 568, and it was growing to 1,771 in 2020, so roughly three times higher than the 2016. Uh, uh, the proportion of 1,700 certificate of the uh, organiz ag agricultural organization in Japan is only 4.6% uh, because uh, in Japan there are uh, uh, 38,000, more than 38,000 uh, organizations are located in Japan. And also uh, in terms of population of agriculture is 1 million. So the gap certification is inc increasing every year, uh, but the proportion is uh, pretty small. And that's the reality. Uh, uh, and if you look at the uh, fruits and vegetables certification trend uh, for Asia Gap, uh, the below uh, numbers, uh, starting 2017, uh, Asia Gap certificate was increasing every year. So at the end, at the end of March uh, 2021, 187 uh, was, uh, was the number of certificate for Asia Gap and the JGAP 832. So the certificate uh, combined number for fruit and vegetable certification is 1,019 uh, at the end of uh, 2000, uh, March 2021. Uh, again, uh, so fruit and vegetable sector uh, has 48% of total certificate uh, the chart uh, represents uh, all ag agricultural uh, activities, including livestock industries, but uh, 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 fruits and vegetables uh, covers uh, 48%. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in terms of cost uh, to implement uh, 
GAP certification. Uh, initial cost is, for example, JGAP approximately $910 US dollar uh, converted by 110 Japanese yen versus one dollar. And Asia GAP uh, initial cost, uh, this is audit cost, is 1360 uh, Initial cost is not uh, may not be so uh, expensive, but uh, uh, farmers need to be prepared for audit uh, uh, about uh, you know uh, more than three months uh, for the audit. So they have to implement uh, uh, the gap accepted uh, uh, environment. So uh, they need to invest invest much more uh, than this cost. Uh, the chart uh, represents the uh, the voice of certified farmers. Uh, some research company uh, performed uh, uh, these uh, 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 the research in the past, and for the satisfied farmers was 53 of the gap effect, and the neutral 28, and dissatisfied 19%. And if you look at the detail one by one, uh, the, the biggest uh, biggest point is food safety. The farmers are satisfied uh, for to ensure food safety um, more than half, and in, in, uh, uh, including satisfied the proportion is 85 uh, percent. So this is the major area uh, that farmers are satisfied after the certification of the gap. The second one is labor safety and also uh, environmental uh, protection. These are key uh, uh, segments uh, to ensure a gap program. And also farm management uh, and human rights protection. This is also important. And, uh, and farmers are satisfied uh, uh, for these five uh, criteria. Uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, as I said earlier, uh, GAP uh, 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 certification uh, have opportunity uh, to convince customers uh, of the food safety. Uh, however, uh, farmers need to pay cost uh, for audit and preparation and maintain and renewal of the certification. Uh, so ideally, uh, each farmer uh, of dragon fruit in the Asia Pacific region uh, have gap certification uh, because uh, their business opportunities will be growing and expected uh, to sell more uh, outside of the country. Uh, but uh, uh, each farmer uh, uh, is not necessarily uh, available for implementing or prepar uh, preparing uh, the environment uh, to meet gap requirements. You know, gap requires uh, 160 control points, so it's not so easy uh, uh, to pass all those criteria. So uh, what I would like to uh, discuss uh, today is uh, to talk about some possible options, that's uh, the second point. Uh, for example, implementing gap equivalent process management to the, the farmers, dragon fruit farmers of the Asia Pacific region. Uh, this case, uh, they don't, they uh, would not have certification, but they can present process management and food, food safety. Uh, they are same level of gap uh, certification. Uh, the third option uh, would be to establish. Uh, Dragon Fruit Farm Network. Uh, of course, we have DFNet uh, to share information to to work together, uh, and this is similar concept. Uh, uh, what I uh, would like to say is the networking of those farmers uh, will leverage uh, to the value of, of the agricultural activities to be able to ensure uh, quality standard and uh, uh, process management. Uh, to keep, you know, uh, criteria. So uh, one idea would be to develop uh, uh, original quality guideline uh, uh, 
to present customers that uh, our dragon fruit are safe and processed in a standardized uh, uh, way. Uh, next slide, please. So GAP certificate uh, can help farmers to convince consumers that uh, food are safe and processed uh, in an uh, organized way. Um, and also uh, GAP uh, can create a, a brand of the dragon fruit uh, uh, in terms of credibility uh, under the GAP certification. Uh, in addition to uh, GAP uh, standard, uh, uh, the farmers uh, uh, can try to to uh, add more value on their product with marketing initiatives. Uh, for example, uh, our dragon fruit is high quality product, uh, and our uh, the dragon fruit has a nutrient like this uh, to promote, and also uh, uh, set up a competitive price to cover. Uh, the necessary cost and profit, and also uh, 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 how to handle product and distribute uh, the dragon fruit. So uh, effective supply chain uh, with also uh, the, the key factor uh, to manage dragon fruit businesses. So uh, this is a final slide. Uh, I like to uh, discuss uh, with all the participants today. Uh, how to add more value on the dragon fruit uh, businesses in the Asia Pacific region. And this is what I would like to talk about. Thank you very much, everyone.